hands like this, come on. Cut your hands like this, come on. Everybody put your hands like this, come on. Cut your hands like this, come on. Everybody put your hands like this, come on. Cut your hands like this, come on. Everybody put your hands like this, come on. Uh huh. Check this out. First John 5 and 4. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. We come to party, y'all. Put your hands like this. Come on. Uh, put your hands like this. Come on. Y'all, put your hands like this. Come on. DW, hit it right here. Say, we overcome. We let the Yeah, he's the feet. He's, he's under our feet. He's under Jump in. Some of you may want to text somebody. Go ahead and take this phone and text them. And tell them to join in with us on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash APWM Thunder. I repeat, facebook.com slash APWM Conway. Tell them to join in with us. We are going live. Also, we are on Twitter. APWM Worldwide. Tell them to join in with us because we're digging deep in this fifth dimension of praise. Yes, this is the third week. We're still dealing with the Zabar. So God has truly been pouring out into us and through us. Amen. The people of God. So call somebody, take somebody. Take this opportunity to tag somebody and say, join in with us. Share this broadcast. Like this broadcast. Because I truly believe God is going to download some very important things for our spiritual walk. And I will be the in him. Glory, hallelujah. Another 30 seconds, invite 
like and share. Invite, like and share. I'll see you right now. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this moment in time that we will not see again. God, we thank you for this gift, this I'll present you that you've given us. God, we thank you that we're walking in newness of life. We thank you that you are making us holy as you are holy. God, we submit ourselves to you. We resist the enemy and he is fleeing from our lives from our minds, from our hearts. God, we thank you that every day we're looking more and more like you. So God, we ask that you give us a special anointing on today to be able to search and seek your word like never before. God, show us the mysteries of your word. Open it up to us. God, we're looking and we're, we're desiring to hear from you. Bless every man, woman, boy, and girl who has tuned in and those who shall come. God, we thank you for your word and we are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. We thank God for you in this uh, Principles of Praise and Worship series. I know you hear me say it every week, but I honor God who is the head of my life. I thank him for uh, the very revelation of the principles of praise and worship. I honor my pastor, Pastor M.L. Clay, for allowing me this opportunity to grow with you all in this principles of praise and worship. And in these several months, I can definitely say even being a praiser, even being a worshiper, my relationship with God through praise and worship has definitely uh, gained more clarity. I understand why I feel the things that I do, why I'm urged and feel led to do the things that I do during, before, and after praise and worship. So it's amazing how God pours out and he opens himself up to us if we will pay attention and listen. So we're in the particular dimensions or portraits of praise, and I am just in awe of what he's already given us. This is part five, the fifth dimension of praise, the fifth portrait of ways that we praise him. And this is the Zamar, Z-A-M-A-R. For those of you who have your notes already, you've already gotten the email, make sure that you print those out as you get those so that you can have, you don't have to go in and out of your email. You can have that right in front of you to study before, during, and after the session, the locker room class has ended. But the Zamar, uh, if you'd like to be added to the email list, call us or text 870-727-0061, or you can just email us at APWMINC at gmail.com. Let us know. Uh, send your name. Let us know that you like to be added to the classroom lesson list. And we thank God for you. So Zamar, it means to sing, to sing, Zamar, to sing. But it's based on a primitive root that means to touch the strings or part of a musical instrument. Actually, for those of you who don't know, uh, the actual, the organ and the keyboard that you see me on every week, uh, those are actually stringed instruments. You don't see the stringed instruments, the piano, they're on the inside of the instrument, but those are actually stringed instruments. So in the guitar family, those are all in relation to the organ and the keyboard, all stringed instruments. So the Zamar means, based on the primitive root, to touch the strings or part of a musical instrument. And this music, as we're touching the strings, is accompanied by the voice. So it's playing and singing that goes together in harmony. Zamar has the connotation of celebration with song and music. So this is nothing sad that we're doing. We are celebrating celebrating God 
with song and music. So we've talked about many areas of the Zamar, how it's been translated in the scripture in our previous weeks. But this week, we want to talk about, we're going to close out the Zamar with uh, the translation meaning with instruments. And this is one of my favorite. I love the book of Psalms. Each psalm or book or song or hymn has its own particular meaning and it has its own particular background in the word of God. Many of them are written by different uh, writers of the songs or hymns. David did write most of the book of Psalms. But we're going to go to Psalm number 150, one of the most uh, vibrant of the Psalms. Psalm number 150, and there are six verses in this particular song or hymn. There are six verses in Psalm 150, so thank you, administrators, uh, for assisting us to make sure that we get these notes in for someone who might not be able to write at the time or get that note down. But Psalm 150, that's where we're going. We're going to look at verses 1 through 6, and we're going to end with verse 6 and bring out what the Lord has shown us in this particular psalm. Amen. I'm going to be reading from uh, the King James Version. Y'all, listen, how many of you all are dealing with allergies right now? This weather is absolutely funny. I want to say crazy. It's raining. My eyes burning. They irritated. They itching. How many of y'all deal with that? Come on, y'all. Just be real. The, 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 the weather is absolutely funny acting right now. Hey, Amen. But yet and still, we are here doing what we do. Praise God. So I see, I, just in case y'all keep seeing me rubbing my eyes, it's not that I'm sleepy. <laughs> Praise God. But my eyes are just very, very, very irritated. Uh, Psalm 150, uh, 1 through 6. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Mm. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the soft tree and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Mm -hmm. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Mm -hmm. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounded cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I love it. Uh, Psalm 150, I love, love, love the King James Version of this. I very often quote the King James Version of this particular scripture, this particular song, this, this uh, song in the book of Psalms. It's very important. There are a few particular words that we're going to look at in the King James that were brought out, and then we're going to, of course, uh, I am very particular about the message translation in Psalm 150. But in the first verse, it says, Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his sanctuary. Uh, not necessarily our sanctuary, but praise God in his sanctuary. Uh, first, I wanted you all to look and give me some definitions of what the word sanctuary actually means. In the dictionary version, what, what does it say about the word sanctuary? Praise ye the Lord. Come on, y'all give me some examples uh, of the definition of the word sanctuary. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Uh -huh. Praise him in the firmament of his power. And firmament is the second. For those who want to go ahead and look up the second definition that we're going to need as we look at the King James Version, I want to make a point as we go here in these definitions to see what the Lord is actually saying, what he actually inspired through this writing. So it says, praise ye the Lord, praise God in his 
sanctuary. The word sanctuary, as we're looking, it actually is a sacred or holy place. So if we could just substitute that for a minute, we could say, Zamar ye the Lord. You all, Zamar the Lord. Zamar him in his sacred or holy place. Praise him in his sacred or holy place. His sanctuary is his sacred or holy place. The place where we know that he's going to be. The place where we know he's going to show up. The place where we know that we can connect with him. The place where we know that we can fellowship and commune with him in a very special, a very real way. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. So there is something special that I want to bring out in this lesson on tonight that first, it's important for us to be in the sanctuary together to give God praise, to send up praises to God in his sacred place, in his holy place. This place has been set apart for God to show up. This place has been set apart and made holy for God's use, for us to give him praise. This is a place already sanctified. All the impurities are out of the way in his sanctuary. This place is dedicated and holy for us to send up praise to God. So we want to look at that word sanctuary. And then the, the B part of that text says, praise him in the firmament of his power. The first place that I uh, recognize seeing the word firmament was in Genesis Chapter one, when we saw the, the uh, word firmament mentioned in the Bible. So come on, y'all give me everybody, not just the administrators, y'all. Let me know what you come up with for a definition for a firmament. Praise him or zamar him in the firmament of his power. The firmament. Have we ever looked at that or do we just glide by that when we read Genesis? Do we even know what that meant? The firmament. Uh -huh. The definition of it is actually the vault of heaven or the sky. Yeah. The sky. Praise him in the vault of heaven of his power. In the sky of his power. In the place of his power. Praise him in this sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Meaning come to him and praise him. Don't try to throw him a long distance praise from in our particular places where we have all our mess going on. Or our environment is all jacked up around us. But come to him in his, in his, in his space. And bring him a clean praise. Bring him a focused praise. Bring him, like last week, we talked about an intentional praise. I have time to think from the time I leave where I am to come to his sanctuary to get my mind wrapped around God. When I get there, I am going to praise your name. When I get there, I am going to give you glory and I am going to give you honor. So, God, I'm stepping out of where I am to come to your sanctuary that's already been dedicated to give and offer up my praise. These two, although these are the same two words uh, in Psalm 150 uh, and in Genesis, uh, they have two different meanings. So we don't want you to get confused thinking he's telling us to praise the sky. Because it's enough people uh, worshiping the sun and the stars and the moon and the birds. So the firmament here that we did with in Psalm 150 is what she said, the vault of heaven. But the firmament that he's talking about in Genesis, y'all, uh, in Genesis, let's just say chapter 1, uh, let's say, let's start at verse 6. 
And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the water from the water. Verse 7, and God made the firmament, the sky, and divided the waters which were under the firmament, the sky from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. He, he put a divide, the firmament divides uh, earth from heaven. And so when she's saying we pray them in the firmament of his power, the vault of heaven, Everything that God represents, everything that God is, we're praising God and we're magnifying God uh, for that. And even Deuteronomy, uh, just to throw this out here, Deuteronomy chapter 3 and 24. O Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or in earth, they can do according to thy works and according to thy might. In correspondence to what we were reading in Psalm uh, 150, let's see, verse, I lost my place on this. Verse 2, where he say, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Amen. Praise him. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Or the firmament, I was saying, in the place of his power. So firmament represents the word place. Firmament is a place. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent Greatness. He didn't say just praise him for his greatness because we know that God is good. We understand that he's great. He's beyond our imagination. But praise him according to his excellent greatness. Just a description. Uh, that adverb was added there. Excellent. Just so we know just how great God is. Just how much we need him. Just how... Uh, magnificent his power is so much above ours his thinking his way of doing things is so much higher than ours so praise him according to his excellent greatness praise him with the sound of the trumpet with the psaltery and harp praise him with the timbrel and dance praise him with the stringed instruments and organs praise him upon the loud cymbals Praise him upon the high sounding symbols. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. So even as we go over into that same passage of scripture, Psalm 150 in the message translation, it says, hallelujah to begin with. And y'all always hear me say it, hallelujah. That's the high praise, but it simply means praise the Lord. So, he opened up, David opened up this psalm with hallelujah, saying praise the Lord. Praise God in his holy house of worship. Praise him under the open skies. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his magnificent greatness. Praise with a blast on the trumpet. Praise by strumming soft strings. Praise him with banjo and flute. Praise him with cymbals and a big bass drum. Praise him with fiddles and mandolin. Let every living, breathing creature praise God. And then he ends with hallelujah. So everything starts with praise the Lord. Everything ends with praise the Lord, no matter what we're doing it, how we're doing it and what combination or, or whatever we are offering up to God. Everything starts with praise the Lord and ends with praise the Lord, because that is what we have been called to do is to praise the Lord. So praise God in his holy house of worship that comes first. Praise the Lord. Come to where it's been designed for us to come together to give him praise. Praise him for his acts of power. In our lesson, we see here, I have a note. It says, Zamar is the fifth dimension 
and not the first. We do not start praise by making music because music with instruments is simply, I shared this before, an extension of our praise and not the creation of it. We are actually the beginning. We are actually the first instruments that God made to give him praise. Our mouths are instruments to give God praise. We praise him. He gave us these beautiful voices. Even further than that, our voices in general, in speaking, are able to say hallelujah. And Lord, I praise you. And Lord, I give you glory. And Lord, you're wonderful. We can even just speak his praises out of our mouth. So the music is not the creation of it, but music is definitely a beautiful part of praise that has been added to accompany the voice to bring God glory. It changes the mood. It changes the atmosphere. That's why it's so important. And pastor, I know you agree and you say it, uh, that it's important for the musicians to be saved and full of the Holy ghost because we can either play unto the glory of God with the anointing and bring in, uh, the, uh, Holy spirits, or we can bring in demonic spirits through our music that we're playing. If we're not in tune, we can be calling in other spirits that are not of God. So we want to make sure that we are in tune and we are filled with the Holy spirit of God so that we are definitely connected and giving him praise, giving him glory and honor. So the music is not the creation of our praise, but our voices are the creation. Praise starts with Toda and Yada by everyone. We went into the, the Toda, the Yada. Y'all have to go back and watch those uh, lessons. I'm not going to go back and teach it tonight. But it starts by everyone. There, Yes, we have praise leaders. I lead praise and worship. I, I'm a worship leader. I lead the people into the presence of God. I call the service into worship. Yes, but it's not just for me to do. It's for all of us, each of us, to have our particular part in praising God. So in the message translation, praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his magnificent greatness. If we cannot, which I believe everyone should be able to think of something that God has done for us, even just on today. If it's nothing more simple than Lord, I thank you for waking me this morning. God, I thank you for working out situations. I thank you for giving me peace in my mind. Peace in my heart. God, I thank you. But we are able to think of reasons, but for his excellent greatness, it's very hard to start thinking about how great God is and not get happy, not get excited, not want to sing and dance and celebrate him with our whole hearts. After having known such a great God, after having experienced his greatness and his mighty acts in our personal lives. It makes a difference when we know what God has done for us ourselves and not just hearing about somebody else who God has blessed, but knowing him for ourselves. Verse six ends in let everything that hath breath Praise the Lord in Psalm 150 and 6. Let everything, not just the choir, not just the praise team, not just the pastor, not just the leadership or the people with titles, but everything. I didn't, I didn't even hear the Bible say, let everybody that's saved and full of the Holy Ghost praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath, everything that's breathing, living, that God created, we owe God praise. We owe him praise. We praise him until we get to the point of where we need to be. Praise doesn't mean that everything is perfect in our lives. Praise doesn't mean that we're uh, not uh, walking according to the word 100% or we've quite, a lot of people like to say, arrived or made it. But it means that I honor God for who he is. I honor him for his excellent greatness. I know who he is and I honor him. And I'm staying in my place in my lane in praise. 150 and 6. Let everything that have breath 
Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Praise ye the Lord. Or hi- hallelujah ye the Lord. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, she was just mentioning about let everything. And he, well, he didn't say just certain ones or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let everything. And so it's very deep. And I want us to go to Psalm 148. And we're going to start in one. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Uh, mm-hmm. I just want y'all to follow along. It says, Psalm 148, starting verse 1, New Living Translation. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Mm -hmm. Praise him from the skies. Mm -hmm. Praise him, all his angels. Mm -hmm. Praise him, all the armies of heaven. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you twinkling stars. Mm -hmm. Praise him, skies above. Praise him, vapors high above the clouds. Mm -hmm. Let every cre- created thing give praise to the Lord, mm-hmm. for he issued his command, yeah. and they came into being. Yeah. He set them in place forever and ever. His decree will never be revoked. Praise the Lord from the earth, you creatures of the ocean depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, wind and weather, they obey him. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all livestock, Mm -hmm. small scurrying animals and birds, kings of the earth and all people, rulers and judges of the earth, Mm -hmm. young men and young women, old men and children. Let them all praise the name of the Lord, Mm -hmm. for his name is very great. His glory towers over the earth and heaven. Mm -hmm. He has made his people strong, honoring his faithful ones, the people of Israel who are close to him, praise the Lord. And then if we go into verse, if we go into uh, Psalm forty nine, mm-hmm. he he explaining it. Psalm one forty nine, starting at verse one. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, mm-hmm. sing his praises in the assembly of the faithful. O Israel, rejoice in your master. O people of Jerusalem, exult in your king. Praise his name with dancing, Mm -hmm. accompanied by tambourine and harp. Mm -hmm. For the Lord delights in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let the faithful rejoice that he honors them. Let them sing for joy as they lie on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their mouth and and a sharp sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the people, to bind their kings with shackles and their leaders with iron chains, to execute the judgment within written against them. This is the glorious privilege of his faithful ones. Praise ye the Lord. Y'all stay right there. Coming into Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Listen, it's saying the same thing over and over. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. (laughs) Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. So all I just read just three of these, mm-hmm. and he was saying it over and over. Listen, I created the moon, so the moon gonna praise me. Yeah. The sun praises me. When the, the stars in the sky, they praise me. Yeah. The wind that I created, it praises me. The trees, when they wave in the wind, they praise me. Yeah. The birds, when they sing, they praise me. Are you here? Everything that God, he said, everything that I have created, I have created to give me the glory, to yeah. give be the praise forever and ever. Let everything that has breath, let everything that is alive give me the praise. He said you can be on your sick bed, yet it still give me the praise. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah ye the Lord. Hallelujah ye the Lord. Amen. And what we are looking at, the word exalt, even when you went to Psalm 149, I like that in verse two, I think, let all Israel celebrate their sovereign creator. 
Zion's children exult in their king. To exult. To show or feel a lively or triumphant joy. We've been talking about this triumphant joy, this loud singing, this 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 screaming for joy uh, with laughter, with gladness. Uh, the Bible even tells us to come before his presence with singing, knowing that the Lord, he is God. It's he that has made us and not we ourselves. The book of Psalms teaches us to celebrate God, to be glad in him, to be excited about who he is. It teaches us that in all things, give him praise, give him thanks. Uh, even Psalm 34, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times, not singling out a particular time to give him praise, but at all times, it's always a good time. It's always a good part of day. It's always a good season. It's always a good part of the service. Even in our, uh, y'all know APWM, y'all know uh, there's no particular part designated for a praise break. There's no particular part to scream out, hallelujah. Whenever the spirit leads or whenever we are touched or moved by the spirit of God or we feel his weight, his glory coming down, that is when we bask in that presence. We bask in what he's doing right there in that moment in us. We don't put it off until another time. We address that right then. That word exult to show or feel a lively or triumphant joy. God is something to be happy about. He's someone to be happy about. He's someone to be excited about. Just when I start thinking about who he is and how great he is and that he gives me an opportunity to lift my voice. He gives me an opportunity for him to hear me. He gives me the opportunity to lift up his name. God, I'm honored. I'm honored to praise you. I don't think that it's a burden to give you the praise. It's not a burden to play the instruments and to sing and to lead the people into a place that I enjoy with you, God. I have triumphant joy. I'm celebrating God for all he has done and for all that he is to me in my life. So we have to understand that this is teaching us not only, we don't want to just know about God. We don't just want to know who he is. We don't want to just uh, do, do the theological studies of the Bible and just know about him and all the Hebrew and the Greek and the terms and have no particular kind of relationship with God. Not know the intimacy of feeling his uh, 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 anointing on our lives, feeling his love wrapped around us. There is no way we, we, that we can just really get to know him by just talking about him. That's the beginning, the beginning of knowledge. That starts it all just knowing who he is and how great he is. But we actually have to practice this thing and be in communion with our Lord and Savior, with our God, our creator, then we can find out some answers to some other things once we're in that re intimate relationship with him. We are able to see some other things as to why they're set up like they're set up, why he does what he does, why he makes us go through this way to get here when in our own minds we may want to just cut across, but he may not intend for us to cut across. There is something that we need to learn along the way. So God desires that we praise him because this restores our relationship with him. We talked about it from the beginning, and I won't let it go. From the beginning of this series, praise and worship brings us back where we belong into the presence of God. Sin, in the beginning, sin separated us from God's presence. We use praise and worship to get us back in that clean place. We use praise and worship to get us back into that intimate place. We use praise and worship to get us to where we can hear clearly with freedom, yes. no interruptions from God. Uh -huh. So that's what we're, we're, we're learning that praise and worship is so important. I don't know how people do a service and just totally skip praise and worship. That's just not working for me. I, I don't understand it. 
That is that intimate personal time with God. And it's so needed because a lot of times we come into the sanctuary with so much on our hearts and on our minds. And we have to take time to work all of that out of the way so that I can hear nothing but what God wants me to hear. Uh-huh. Did uh-huh. you have something you were going to say? Oh, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. We, we want God to be able to get to us and, and work out the kinks and the things that he needs us to catch on to, the things that he needs us to hear. I, I, I say it a lot. It's during praise and worship that God gives us directions for our lives. So I may come in with one thing on my mind and as I start playing and as I start singing, the Lord is speaking through those words. And then the Lord is opening up my mind. He's opening up my heart. He's helping me to see some things. He's letting me know that he did it before he can do it again. Even on Sunday, uh, as I was in a service, I just kept hearing the words, only God can do it. God can do anything. God can do anything but fail only God can do it sometimes we come into a situation thinking that we have the answers and that we can work it out but only God can really do it he can give us direction and guidance in that situation but it's through praise and worship that we actually learn what it is that God is trying to say during praise and worship during my praise I understand that my environment changes because we understand that praise does not change God he is he he never changes he is the same yesterday today and forevermore as his word says but the praise changes us the cha- the praise brings us closer to God the the praise brings us in more of an intimacy with him more of a fellowship and a close communion with him we start to see him more for who he is and how great he is when we're praising as we're saying those words how great is our God sing with me how great is our God all will see how great is our God as we say the words we are reminded of his goodness we are reminded of his faithfulness we are reminded of his presence in our in our lives he reminds us through his own word as we pray the word as we sing the word we are reminded of who God really is so even though it may have diminished out of our thoughts and minds because we were going through something on the way but as we come and we reconnect with God in a real way like we're supposed to we'll forget about all of that because only God can fix it so Why not just come to him first? Come straight to God and allow him to fix it anyway, no matter what's going on in our lives. One of my notes, it says, perhaps our churches are devoid or void or or, are missing God's power because we want to start with music. But God wants us to start with thanksgiving meaning out of our mouths lord you're good lord you're worthy lord i thank you opening our mouths and lifting our hands see the lifting of our hands this is surrender this says god i surrender to you it's not about me i'm not holding anything back from you withholding nothing god i surrender and i open my mouth and i give you the fruit of my lips god i give you words that celebrate you i give you words that speak well of you i give you words that lift up your name and magnify you before others so that they can see the celebration in my heart the celebration in my mind the celebration in my spirit but God wants us to start with the thanksgiving and then the music the zamar it comes in and accompanies the praise that's already there it enhances the praise that's already coming out of my mouth music is beautiful but we must be careful not to expect hear me music is beautiful But we must be careful not to expect the musicians and worship leaders to do for us what we must do for ourselves. I want to say that again. The music is beautiful. You know, many times people are like, oh, my God, Dr. Clay, um, 
you have such a gift and it's so beautiful and you play so well and oh, that's all good and fine. But the music cannot take the place of what God created me for. The music cannot take the place of what God created you for. We were created to praise. We were created to worship him. We were created to give him the glory. We were created to give him the honor. So we cannot allow the musicians, yes, they are gifted. Yes, they have been planted into the house to do some marvelous things on those instruments. But we cannot not allow the musicians and the worship leaders to take the place of what we should be doing with Thanksgiving, opening our mouths and lifting our hands because this music is beautiful, but it's been brought, it's been anointed and ordained to accompany our mouths and what we must do for ourselves. We have to have something to celebrate before the celebration can start. Now, come on. How would it look if I said I was doing a birthday party, but there was no birthday? If I was doing a celebration, but there was no particular event to celebrate, we have to have something to celebrate before the celebration can start. Uh, Thanksgiving reminds of us of who we are and what he has done, what God has done for us. So then having looked at that and we look back at it and we see all the times that we've not necessarily given God all of our praise, we may have been worried about who was looking at us or if we look like we were trying to do too much or trying to be too much, we could never give God enough praise. It's not possible to praise him too much. What, are we guilty of sometimes not giving him our full attention? Are we guilty sometimes of not losing ourselves in the praise, but trying to make everything around so perfect until we don't get what we need when we come into the house? So we need to look at that thing and make sure we're giving God all of ourselves. Make sure that we're losing ourselves in him. Make sure that we're getting what he intends for us to get. Out of the word, out of the praise, out of the music, out of the whole orchestration that he's put before us. The gifts that he's placed in our midst. Are we taking advantage of what God has done? When we look back at Psalm 150, that was our main passage for this class on tonight. Praise God in his holy house of worship. But it opened up with hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bringing, that's the call to worship. Hallelujah. It's the call to worship. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everybody take notice. God is worthy to be praised. Praise him in his holy house of worship. Praise him under the open skies. Praise him for his acts of power. Yes. Praise him for his magnificent greatness. We have to be aware of who he is and how worthy he is of our praise. Amen. Psalm 150, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. In reference to that, Psalm 145, verses 5 and 6. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy awesome acts. And I will declare thy greatness. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy awesome acts. Mm -hmm. And I will declare, I will pronounce, I will announce thy greatness. Praising the Lord, we are announcing, we're letting everybody know who God is, what he means to us, 
not just through our lips, but through our actions. Because it's a lifestyle, y'all. We understand worship is a lifestyle. But I want to include praise because if I'm grateful, it's more than just lip service. We just say, oh, I thank you. Oh, no, I love you. It's more than just lip service. Uh, it's action with it. And so our praise should be just more than lip service when we're in the four walls amongst one another. But it should also be what we do at home, at work, on the school, on vacation, y'all. Our life should still exemplify praise. It should still exemplify uh, thanksgiving and gratefulness unto God who is a great God. How many of you know that God is great? Yes. I mean, he's our father. How many of you know we have an awesome father? If he's great to you, just type across the screen, God is great. Oh, God is great. He's great. No matter what goes on, no matter what we've been through, no matter what we've dealt with, dealing with, God is still great. Yes. The times don't change his greatness. Right. Uh, how we feel doesn't change his greatness. If, we, if we're the richest in the world or the poorest in the world, it does not change God's greatness. If we're sick or if we're well, it does not change God's greatness. God is great regardless. He was great before we got here. He'll be great when we leave. He is great at all times. He is greatness. Just like God is love, God is greatness. He is awesomeness. He said, listen, I created all of these things that praise me, that give me the glory with what they do yeah. by following and obeying the assignment in which I have given yeah. unto them. Yeah. The fish praise God by staying in the water swimming. Where he put That's where he put them. And they swim showing they are grateful. They're not just sitting in the cut, amen, being still, but they're, they're swimming showing how grateful they are, amen, to be alive. They're moving. <laughs> they're, they're, they're showing how grateful they are to be in the water. Where, I'm waiting where to God, get out this water. Where God put me. No, no, no. I'm, Lord, I'm grateful for where you put me, and I'm thank you for thanking you that it's going to get even better than this. Yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So we honor God for you all on tonight. Uh, in Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6. Hey Amen. I need y'all to put some clapping emojis on the screen and give God a hand clap of praise for Dr. Clay doing such an awesome job on tonight. I was just over here just going through y'all. Eyes just burning instead of rubbing my eyes. Y'all stretch your hand toward the pastor and say, Lord bless him. Lord, Lord bless me. But I'm going to go in there and get that, uh, the, that Zyrtec yeah. and, them, uh, and those allergy eye drops, y'all. And uh, I'll be good to go. But nevertheless, we praise God uh, for his word. Listen, family, I want you all to continue uh, to lift us in prayer. I want you all to continue to be faithful uh, unto God. Be faithful to the teaching. We're here for you. We're not just in the locker room just to be in the locker room. But we are actually in the locker room where foundational teaching takes place. It's because we want you to know the truth. Mm -hmm and nothing but the truth. Come on, somebody. So help us, God. We want you to understand, amen, what the Lord is saying to us, what God has given unto us, yes. so that we can better utilize it in our lives personally. And then that makes us, and it also helps us to be uh, more effective in our witnessing to others, to let them know who God is and how to draw them. Because the people have questions. Just like you, they have questions. And they, they don't understand. And so we have to be ready to give an account. We have to be ready to uh, to share with them what we know. And I thank God for your faithfulness of you all being here. I thank God for you all taking the time to help us to digitally disciple the people by simply pushing the button, uh, helping us to evangelize the world. I thank God for those of you who are obedient in that area. And I pray right now uh, in the name of Jesus that God will bless every person. Uh, that has shared this broadcast. I pray a special blessing over your life, over your family, and over your future uh, in the name of Jesus. And I hear somebody with Pastor, I, I didn't do it yet. I, I, I missed it. Well, you got an opportunity right now to share this broadcast. Amen. Just simply push share and make sure that you like this broadcast because God is doing something in this season. And when we came into 2020, before we got into 2021, uh, I declare that this is the year of promotion. And I believe God has been doing just that. I'm yet still hearing testimonies 
uh, what God is doing in various people's lives who are connected uh, to this great house of God. And I thank God for what he is doing, that he is revealing himself, uh, that he is showing himself real, uh, and that he is showing himself strong. Amen. He said his word will not return unto him void, but it would do what he sent out for it to do. And so we praise God for that. We praise God uh, for you. Also, you all know that we, uh, we're we going to give you the opportunity to sow seed uh, into fertile ground. Uh, we're not chasing you for your money. We're not begging you for your money. We actually give you an opportunity to bless yourself, to bless your house, to bless your family. Come on, y'all, to bless your bloodline. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together and running over. Uh, shall men give into, unto your bosom. Or is it the New Living Translation said they should give it to your lap. So we thank God for his word. I am a giver. We are givers. That's why we so blessed, y'all, because we are givers. And everybody who know anything about us, who are close enough to us, uh, they do understand this truth because God, many of them have been able to receive uh, blessings that God has blessed us with, and we thank God for that. I want to say this while it's on my mind, y'all. Somebody tried to hack uh, my Facebook page. Amen. And so if you got some crazy stuff, please report it to Facebook because you know it's not me. I don't have time for the drum. Uh, I don't have time for drama or chaos. It says ML Clay. It did not have a picture on it. Uh, but yet it's still somebody was trying to impose, amen, or try to, uh, uh, an imposter, amen, try to be me, I guess, but not knowing these are big shoes to feel, amen, this is a big burden to carry, amen, when you're carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ at this magnitude. So I don't, uh, I found out Sunday, I was going live in the family group and uh, got kicked out and was unable to get in because somebody was trying to be me. Lord have mercy. Yes, and my post went against community standards, so I don't know who this individual it is. Amen. But I'm, if, if you're watching, just be you. Amen. And God will bless you for being you. So I, I'm not sending out any friend requests at the moment. Amen. I'm not doing anything like that. If you see something crazy from an ML Clay, you already know. You, you, you know my history. You can dial 870-727-0061 and let us know. Amen. So you already know we're not going for that. But listen, y'all, at the end of this broadcast, uh, you're going to see the various ways to give. We're not going to quote them at this moment, uh, but you're going to see the various ways to give. Uh, take advantage of it. Amen. Take advantage of it. So good, so seated to good ground and watch what God does. It's not just about money. You may not need a financial blessing. Everybody not struggling financially. But you might need a good, nice rest. Amen. Peace of mind. You may need a door open for you. You may need favor. You may need something for somebody else. You may be sowing a seed for your neighbor, for your neighbor's children. Come on, somebody, for your community. Whatever it may be, put an assignment on your seed and watch God do just what he said he would do. Amen. Because by in faith we give and faith we receive and we return unto us and supply all of our needs in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you all for tuning in with us in the locker room uh, where foundational teaching takes place, as you see on the screen already. Amen. If you're looking for a church home, look no further. Text CONNECT to 870-727-0061. If you are in need of special prayer, call us. That number is available to you. That is our ministry cell phone number. Call us, amen, we're going to do our best to pray you through. Pray with you as we pray you through. Let me say that again, because so many times people want us to pray for them, and they're not praying for themselves. So call that number, and we will pray with you that God, amen, will hear our prayers, and we will touch and agree, and God will move on your behalf. Family, I love you all greatly. I look forward to seeing you all Saturday, 7 p.m. for our Saturday Night Live worship celebration amen god has been speaking to us in our series entitled uh you're in the army now amen dr clay gave us a powerful word on last saturday amen asked us a question are you prepared uh, to walk it out if you missed it go to youtube amen to our youtube channel apwm worldwide make sure you subscribe amen and turn on your notifications 
amen, so you can stay abreast of what's going on. Amen. I love you all greatly. We look forward to seeing you Saturday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live as well as Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time also on Facebook and on Twitter, APWM Worldwide. Family, we love you greatly. God bless you, and we will see you in the Cyber Sanctuary this weekend. We love you. Welcome to Anointed Praise and Worship Ministries Worldwide. My name is Shay, and here are our ways to give. At Cash App, APWM Conway, give Wi-Fi, Anointed Praise and Worship, on our website at www.apwmworldwide.org, or you can call 870-727-0061. That's at Cash App, APWM Conway, give Wi-Fi, Anointed Praise and Worship, on our website at www.apwmworldwide.org or you can call 870-727-0061.